So today I'm starting a new series and I was, I was uh, really struggling how, how to go about this because originally I wanted to talk about marriage but then I, I remember that not everybody in here is married although some are going to get married uh, and uh, you know so I wanted to find a way to generalize so that everybody is uh, connected and nobody is left behind. And uh, I originally wanted to call it marriages that work, but then I uh, had to tweak a few things and I've titled this series Relationships That Work. Somebody said relationships. Relationships That Work is going to be the series and uh, how it's going to work, Sister Aurea, for the first one, I'm going to introduce it. But for the next two, three weeks, I'm going to have you guys involved. I want us to get into the heart of relationships because most of you or some of you, maybe when you came, we didn't know each other. But over the course of time, we have developed relationship. And, uh, you know, you come and you expect not just to worship and hear the word and go, but we have a relationship. We talk, some, some of you, we talk during the week. Or you are in relationship with uh, a spouse. You are in relationship with your mother. Do you know that just because somebody is your mother does not mean that you are in relationship with them? Am I speaking the truth? You can have a child, but you are not in relationship with the child. But you pushed her out. You carry her nine months, but she doesn't want you. He doesn't want you. They, want, they don't want anything to do with you. You're not in relationship. But uh, I want us to talk about relationships that work because at the heart of everything, it's about relationships. The Bible says God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God wants to have relationship with us. He said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to have relationship with Minister John. Whatever it takes, even if it means sending down my son, I'm going to do it in order to have a relationship with him. Amen. So everything we do, believe it me or not, the jobs you're going to do, you're not just heaping a lot of money on the account. Right, mama? When you make that money out of, you know, it's tough, you're going through stuff at work, after you get the paycheck, what do you do? After paying your bills and, you know, you know taking care of yourself, you send something back home. Why? Because you have a relationship with these people. Am I telling the truth? You want to make sure they are good. You want to make sure the kids are going to school. You want to make sure the grandkids, you know, are having birthday parties. You're sending them, you know, presents. You are paying school fees for people because of a relationship. Right? So it is important for us as believers to even have good relationships with one another. As believers in the church... But also, in, for, the, for those of us who are married, it is important to God and to us and the body of Christ to have good and healthy marriages. For those who have children, it is important for us to have good relationship with our children. It may not be easy, but let me tell you, one step at a time. Some of us have to pray before we engage, but we're going to try. Amen. So today I want to talk about relationships that work. And there's going to be so many topics. And uh, what I want to do, and I'm going to ask you humbly, please, it's not force, but I want to ask you voluntarily. We're going to, I'm going to be sending out topics. Or you're going to give me feedback. What you think makes relationships to work. And we're going to get chairs here. And we're going to talk. You're going to tell us from your experience. Why, you know, how does it work raising kids? For those of you who have bigger kids, how has been your experience? How were you able to make it work? If it failed, why did it fail? Because when you tell us why it failed, we're going to avoid those mistakes. Amen. So this is, we are getting into some things. Somebody say, we are getting into some things. Amen. This is not, this is not a, a hallelujah shout message. It's going to be, we are getting into real stuff. Somebody say real stuff. Real stuff. And uh, the first installment for today is accountability. Somebody say accountability. Accountability. In order for any relationship to work, there has to be accountability. And uh, I've been 
ministering as a pastor of this ministry for over 10 years, about 11 years, 12 years now, but I've been in the ministry longer. But when God is confirming a message, it, you can see, you, you're going to be seeing signs saying the same thing. And this past, I think, three, four days, my wife has been on this word, accountability. And I was like, I was about to say, would you stop? Every time, accountability. But then God was just confirming to me. Because I was, you know, trying to, you know, see what do I start with? And so accountability is what, honey, I don't know if you realize, but you've been talking about accountability a lot this whole week. But I already had the message, so God was just confirming. So today we're starting with accountability. So let's start with the dictionary meaning, or because for most of us, English is not the first language, so it is important for us to get to the root of the, you know, of the meaning of the word. So accountability, according to the online dictionary, it says accountability is the obligation or willingness to accept responsibility for one's action. If you are in a relationship with anybody and you are not able to accept responsibility for your actions, I can guarantee you your relationship only has a couple of miles and it's going to fall apart. Amen. Is this making some sense so far? Accountability is the idea that an individual is responsible for their actions and can be held to a certain standard of excellence. There is nobody in the world except, you know, you know, we do stuff here. People do stuff here. But nobody wakes up, you find somebody beautiful, and then you say, I'm going to marry this person, but I'm just going to have a bad relationship with them. That doesn't make sense. We're going to get a house together. We're going to get a car together. We're gonna ch I'm going to change my names and then I'm going to ruin it after two years. You have to be crazy to do that. It all starts well. You love one another. You respect one another. But along the way, you get used to one another and then now you do your own thing. Here in America, the lady say, I'm going to do me. I'm going I'm to do my own thing. But accountability you accept responsibility for your actions and you, you are held to a certain standard of excellence. So it takes more than one person to be in a relationship. Amen. Even in the relationship we have with God, you are not in the relationship by yourself. You are in the relationship with God. In other words, you are accountable to God. Amen. Amen. And the funny thing is that God is already accountable to us because he has revealed himself to us. We talked about the character of God. He says, I am a just God. I am a patient God. I am a loving God. And God cannot go against his word. The Bible says that God has exalted. God has exalted his word. Above his name. Am I right? The word that comes out of the mouth of God, the Bible says, it does not go out empty. It accomplishes everything he sends out to do. So God has already made himself accountable to us. Guess who falls short all the time? You fall. I fall. I don't, I don't uh, meet the portion that I said that I'm going to meet. Amen. So accountability. As Christians. As believers. We need to be accountable people. Accountable to God. Accountable to one another. Some people say you know what. I don't have a pastor. I pray. On YouTube. I, I, I have a lot of people. I know that. They go to T.D. Jack's church. But you've never stepped in Dallas. You're not even a member online. They don't know you. That is my church. But who are you accountable to? There's got to be some 
some kind of, you know, when you are submitted to a church, you are submitted under the spiritual authority of the, of the, of the, of, of, of the pastor in the church. They are not there to beat you or do it, but they, they, they are also accountable to God on your behalf. Amen. Amen. Who prays for you? Who intercedes for you before God? There's got to be somebody who says, God, please help Sister Jada. God, I haven't seen Sister Jada in six months. Please, God, whatever is going on in her life, please make our please bring her back. Lord, I pull her out of the pit. Lord, I pull her out whatever is distracting her. But you're going to be accountable. I am accountable to God for you. Amen. That is why I, I'm not bothered. Well, I'm bothered sometimes, but not as bothered. Not having a thousand people. But I am so concerned if I'm not able to account to God on your behalf. I should be able to lift you up before the Lord and say, God, I bring Mama Margaret before you. Amen. Accountability is so important. In order for any relationship to work, there has to be accountability. Now, we're still in the introduction. I don't think we're going to go so far today, but I'm going to try. Uh, let me break this down again. Accountability is the willingness to accept responsibility for one's actions. It can also mean being transparent. In order for the relationship to work, we need to be transparent. Amen. There needs to be transparency. Some people say, I don't want anybody in my business. But when you are in a church setting or in a group like this, sometimes you have to give up something. You have to break some walls. I don't want people getting into my life. I don't want people to talk about me, but you got to open up. When God places you in a place, in a community like this, you have to open up yourself to some level of transparency. Because when we don't know what is going in your life, how am I going to pray for you? How am I going to seek God? For? How am I going to leave my meat that I grilled on Monday to fast for you? I need to know. There's got to be some transparency. And all these, uh, all these uh, definitions, these are not Bible. These are just dictionary definitions of accountability. Amen. Listen to this. It means being transparent and allowing others to observe and evaluate one's performance. Accountability. You need to be able to allow the people you are in relationship with to observe and evaluate your performance. They do this at your workplace. After 90 days, they do an evaluation. Hey, how is it going? Do you feel, you know, uh, do you feel like your expectations are met? Do you feel, do you think you can get better? We think you're struggling in this area. Do you think this is a good fit? They are trying to create some kind of accountability. Because when you are coming at 9.30 every day, and the job says you have to be here at 8 a.m., there is no alignment. So the accountability helps to see why are you coming at 9.30 every day? What can we do? Do we need to, to extend your time? If you're dropping off kids early, do you need enough time to drive through traffic, drop the kids off, and then be here on time? Amen. So when, when we are in a relationship and there is accountability, it means you allow, you not only because this is the problem, we are always pointing the finger. In most relationships, you are not respecting me. You are not honoring me. You are not serving me. You are not there for me. You are not giving me gifts. You are not loving on me. But what are you doing? The same way you want the, the person to do the stuff for you, you need to be able to do the same. So it's, it's a two-way street. Amen. Is, is, is this making any sense? Relationships that work... God wants us to be, you know, God has created us for community. Whether you like people or not, 
at work that is a community at work you work with people whether you work virtually there is a community of people you talk with every single day on meetings in the church you are dealing with people you cannot love god so much and you don't want to deal with people <laughs> it's, it's going to be very hard for you you have to deal with people amen so you got to leave room to be able to be evaluated and also evaluate the other person that is the only way we're going to be have relationships that work amen um one of the things that the lord has been revealing and i knew it but he's been revealing even more god takes no pleasure when we are not in peace god takes no pleasure when our relationships are distorted god takes no pleasure when our lives are fangled up and i said something i think during the week that wherever jesus went he did good everywhere he went in fact let's go to uh acts chapter 10 verse 38 and i haven't even gotten into the scripture for today but this could be a good foundation amen wherever jesus went he did good that is why we as a church we need to talk about these things because when your family situation is good back home you are going to be happy you're going to praise god better amen we're not just going to shout here and you go back to hell in your house it is toxic back there you don't talk to one another the relationships have to work so acts chapter 10 38 let's go there real quick amen listen how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and with power and how jesus did what went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil because god was with him that is the mission of jesus and doing what the devil was doing because that's what the devil did he put people under depression he put people under stress he put people under blindness but wherever jesus went he was doing good healing the lepers healing the blind raising the dead that is his mission now he wants to heal our relationships hallelujah he wants our relationships to work amen listen to this the fact relationship uh, accountability is the fact of being responsible for what you do and able to give a satisfactory reason for it and i think this is a very very powerful point because uh and i've seen like being in a marriage sometimes you want to have your own way and you know your spouse is not going to approve of something and then you're going to do it anyways and then you're going to come and say and i've done this i'm going to be open to you i've done it but it beat me in the in the butt and now god is dealing with me because sometimes we think that accountability is saying you leave the house you go to the mall you spend this amount of money on something you didn't inquire with your spouse and then you tell him hey honey i just bought this but you know because you've already bought it you can't take it back i'm now accountable to my partner no you are not being accountable you are just informing and what are you going to do anyways it's here but accountability is saying hey honey we have a hundred dollars in the account but i've seen this thing at the store is it okay or well, what do you think if we spend thirty dollars to get it and then you're going to have a, a debate about it but we haven't paid this bill how about we pay this bill first and get this thing next week when we get paid do you see there is a conversation but if i just say i'm the man of the house i made this check this is my money i'm gonna buy for 50 bucks and we'll deal with the rest later now 
you bought the thing is there but the wife is not happy and now you want her to to love on you you want her to accept you and give you hugs and uh, you know all the good things but you are not accountable there is no agreement God is not interested in that the Bible says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to be in unity. Amen. If you do this over time, you do it every year after year, month after month, now we're going to have some friction. And guess what? Now you're going to give me a call. You're going to have to call the pastor because the husband is really being stubborn. Pastor, I don't understand my husband. We are behind on this, but he's always buying this stuff without asking me. But it is so easy to talk, be accountable. Some, you know, some people don't even know how much their husbands make here in America. How much their wives make. And for some women, if, let's say if the woman makes more than the husband... Now, this is my money. You are not supposed to know about this. You figure it out. I was told a story about a woman who had a lot of money on the account. And this poor guy was struggling. And the lady said, you're the man. Figure it out. And the guy was struggling, losing weight. And, uh, and people find themselves finding solace somewhere else. Because they are finding somebody who is under, trying to understand. And you see how the marriage is breaking apart. There is no accountability. How can you have six figures on your account? And you can't even help your partner who is struggling. Relationships that work. In order for the relationship to work, there has to be accountability. Amen. Amen. There has to be accountability. And if you need my notes, I can give them to you in your time. And I'm going to do the same. Like the last series, I'm putting it into a study, uh, kind of like a Bible study thing so we can be able to do it. I'm going to do the same for this one. Amen. Listen, accountability in relationships is the willingness to accept responsibility for actions, words, and feelings. It, may, it means acknowledging how your behaviors affect your partner and owning how you contribute to any negative cycles. There is always another side of the story. It's not just, you know, anytime somebody comes to me with a marriage dispute, Brother Joshua, I listen to everything and then I ask, what are you doing to this person for them to treat you the way they are treating you? Because there is a probability, a possibility, you're doing something that is triggering them to do what they're doing to you. Amen. So we're going to be able to be resp accept responsibility for our actions and our words. Some, some people say that words don't hurt. Yes, they do hurt. You can slap somebody on the cheek and, uh, you know, it's going to go away. But the word, once it is spoken, it's going to be in somebody's mind for the rest of their life. So we're going to be Willing to accept responsibility. Amen. Listen to this. Accountability is a foundational principle of all relationships. Including romantic relationships, friendships and bonds between family members. It, listen to this. This is what accountability does, Sister Aurea. Accountability, it leads to more trust. When there is accountability, your partner is going to trust you even more. He said, Pastor, you're just talking about partners. Your mom is going to trust you even more. He said, hey, mommy, I got a job raise. I got a, a raise at the job. Now I got more money in the account. How do you think I can help us in this household? You're being accountable to her. She's not, she's not asking for it. But you're just being reasonable and accountable to her. It's going to lead to more trust. 
vulnerability. Some people are not vulnerable. Some people are not willing to open up because we are not accountable to them. So they have a brick, a heart of stone because of how we've been treating them. Now they're not willing to break down. They're not willing to give of themselves to us. Amen. It brings more dependability and more compassion. When you are accountable. Now, this is what I do. We started a business recently with my wife. And uh, it's going very well. And I don't have to tell her every little thing. Because she even has access to the bank account. But I created a thing in the notes. And it's a shared document. In case anything changes, I update. And she gets a prompt on the message. She knows how much we make every week. And if she's not understanding anything, honey, how come we're having this struggle here? I say, honey, just go back to the note. I put everything in there. But if I was doing it the other way, I would say, honey, why do you care? I'm the one running this thing. You handle the kids, handle the household, and I'll just bring in the money. But it is my responsibility. This is what I do, and I'm, I'm being an open book to you. When I travel, I'm driving maybe two hours away. I put in the address to the house, and I share with her my address. Right? my uh, my uh, ETA so she knows exactly where I'm at she doesn't, she doesn't ask me of that never but it is important for me to do that because if somebody calls and says hey we saw your husband at a bar <laughs> at 12 noon with a certain lady she's going to say no you're lying I can see he's right here in Medford as I speak right now. I can see the car is moving now. She's not tracking me, but I voluntarily gave her the information. Now she has peace of mind. And then she asks me, honey, uh, how far are you now? I see you about 20 minutes out. Okay, I'm going to get the breakfast ready. I'm going to get the lunch ready. Do you see how the marriage is becoming interesting? Now I'm so tired, but I come back home and the first place I go is at the dining room because I know the breakfast is ready. There is accountability. Amen. It is so important that our relationships work. It is so sad that in the church, we have so many divorces in the church. But the reason we have so many divorces is because there is no accountability. We are accountable to God but not accountable to our partners. But the Bible says, how are you going to say that you love God so much, whom you never seen with your eyes? But the person you see, you don't even say good morning. Amen. Listen to this as I, I get ready to finish. To be accountable, you need to be completely honest and own up to what you did fully. We're going to make mistakes. And I know for parents, I'm going to go get this to a minute. This honesty destroys trust, which is very difficult to rebuild. You need to be completely honest and own up to what you did fully. Now, I've been a lot on the angle of marriage or relationships, romantic relationships, but something happened back home where I come from with my family and it actually even included my mother and I wasn't talking to my mother for a certain point period of time because I was deeply hurt deeply hurt for an extended period of, and I was pastoring I was preaching but I was hurt and I said in order to remove myself from saying anything bad that is going to bring a curse on me from my mother I'm going to remove myself that was my strategy but then the Lord spoke to me actually the Lord spoke to me but then he used my wife my wife say honey I want us to talk I say okay I want you to forgive your mother I want you to forgive your family it's not easy but I want you to forgive them and I prayed about it it was so hard 
I cried. I forgive them first. What was done to me, it was very bad. Very, very, very bad that I had every right to be away. I had every right. And I forgave anyways. And I went back home to Uganda. I met with my mom. After all the pleasantries and everything, I, I talked to her. I asked God for grace. We talked. And I opened up my heart. Everything that hurt me. These were facts. Everything that was on my heart. And then she opened up her mouth too. And she said, son, this is what you did as well. This broke me. This made me feel this way. I didn't feel like I was loved. I didn't feel like you're my only son. I can't believe you did this to me. But I had to take a step. And where? at a place of accountability. Amen. And then I flew back I flew back here to the states. But it wasn't finished because it wasn't her alone who was involved. The entire family was involved. So I had to call up a meeting on Zoom. And I had to collect the entire family for about 2 hours. And we talked through everything. And at the end of the meeting, I had people who were still st stuck up and I said I want you guys to forgive me in any way that I did that made you feel the way you feel and I released them and everybody was keeping quiet and then I said are you guys going to apologize to me because it is two ways because I said I've, I've forgiven you but I need to hear what do you have to say to me Amen. And then I gave them a, a chance. And one by one, they started opening up. Now, I'm not saying that everything is perfect. But it opened up a door for us to be able to work together to a certain degree. It didn't go back to where it was in the very beginning. But at least there was some kind of understanding. Now I'm able to help when I'm able to help. But before, I was like, no, I'm not giving my money to these people because they stabbed me in the back. But now I'm able to work with them with wisdom because I don't want to get hurt again. You got to have wisdom. Amen. So in order for us to move forward, we need to have accountability. Amen. We need to have accountability. Let me just read a scripture. And then we're going to be done for today. I see the time. And then we're going to pick it up next Sunday. I want you to come. If you know anybody who's going through a family dilemma, drama, I think this is going to be transformational. And you're going to help me. We're going to share. I want to hear your side, your experience, what you went through. And then by sharing your story, you're going to help somebody else overcome and be victorious. Amen. Let's read just one verse, just one chapter here in uh, John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And I'm going to show you why it is so important for accountability to God. John chapter 17. Let us start from verse number one. And I'm going to read. Let me read up to verse number eight. Let's read together. I'm, I'm going to be done right after this. Mr. John, do you mind just playing something? No, I think he's, he's gone. Yeah, he's leaving. I think he's leaving. Amen. I just want to, I'm just closing up and I, I know the, the spirit of God is moving. I just want to keep the atmosphere going. Amen. John 17 verse number one, it says, When Jesus had spoken, the, is, is somebody getting blessed by this? When Jesus had spoken these things, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify 
your son so that your son may glorify you verse number two that's good say right there for you granted him authority over all people so that he may give eternal life to all those you have given him now this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent listen verse number four now this is jesus giving an account he's at the end of his mission here on earth and he's giving accountability back to god who sent him verse number four he says i have glorified you here on earth by accomplishing the work you gave me to do and now father glorify me in your presence with the glory i had with you before the world existed verse number six listen to this he says i have revealed your name to those you have given me out of the world they were yours you gave them to me and they have kept your word verse number seven listen to this now they know that everything you have given me comes from you for i have given them the words you gave me and they have received them they know with certainty that i came from you and they believed that you sent me jesus the son of god jesus god himself is giving accountability to his father before he flies back to heaven why because they have a relationship and at some point he prays he said i pray that they are one just like you and i are one it was important to jesus to give a report even before he lands back in heaven so that the relationship they have continues to work so brothers and sisters as we live today my prayer is that we start by being accountable when you're going back home just say hey honey i'm just leaving work hey mom do you need anything from the store i'm here at market basket hey mom are you on par with your telephone bill hey son are you okay is there anything we need to talk about you can start with i'm praying for you son you don't have to go through the deep of the whole thing you can say i'm praying for you i'm praying for you i love you one step at a time one step at a time be accountable and let's make these relationships to work and let's heal our marriages let's heal our children let's heal the church and god is going to be glorified let's get up on our feet father we thank you for your word this morning Thank you for this series we've started relationships that work i know many of us we haven't done this accountability thing we've been raised to be independent strong women we don't ask anybody you can just stay over there where you were before father forgive us for being solo in a relationship for those of us who are children who are sons who have being away from our mothers and our fathers and being rebellious please forgive us for parents who don't know how to reach out to their children to ask for forgiveness because they are parents father i pray by the power of the holy spirit lord you will break 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 that break that break that bondage bring that the chains that are that are stopping us the bridge Lord, break those bridges that are uh, break those things that are stopping us to get to our kids we pray for supernatural bridges to be built 
so that we can be in touch with the people that we love and we care about. Father, we ask you, Lord, forgiveness to our siblings. Some of us have issues with our siblings. We don't talk. We don't get along. But it is in your interest that we get along, that we may glorify you. Let there be healing taking place today in the name of Jesus. Father, help us. Help us, Lord. Let our relationships thrive. And Father, I pray right now for those who are in marriages where they're struggling and they can just not talk about certain things. Holy Spirit, make it easy. Give them wisdom. For those who are, Lord, in any kind of relationship where there has been deadness, Father, I speak life into these relationships. Let there be life once again, not by might, not by power, but by your Holy Spirit. Let healing begin here in your house, even to those watching us online. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. If there is somebody that you think you have fallen off, it's a child, it's a, a spouse, it's a, whatever it is, as you're in the presence of God, I just want you to mention their name and say, God, help me to reach out to this person. Say their name, God, I'm praying for this person. They hurt me so bad. Father, help me to forgive them. If it is in your will for us to be in relationship, Father, I pray that you make our create an opportunity for us to be in relationship again. There is power in prayer. There is power when you open up your mouth. It takes place in the spirit first and then it's going to manifest later on in the physical. Father, I pray that there will be healing for siblings, healing for children, healing for, for parents, healing for people who mistreat us at work, between managers, between supervisors, Lord, healing in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Was somebody blessed today? God wants to heal us. God wants us to heal. God wants to heal us. You have a responsibility to release yourself. And the other person has a responsibility, but you are not them. Don't force them. But you can create an opportunity for you to be free. When you walk in freedom, God is going to touch those people as well. And then we're going to have relationships that work. Amen.